Okay, so Eloisa studies cows, pregnancy in cows. I study child language development. There must be like a blank spot there, sorry. Um, so what do cows and kids have in common? Rubrics, of course, right? You always knew. So today we're going to talk to you about um, the various purposes and uses for rubrics in things like assessment, must not be the microphone, <laughs> teaching, and self-evaluation. You'll receive some explicit instruction, which doesn't sound very fun, but we're going to make it fun this afternoon, on developing rubrics in Canvas. Anybody with the hearing loss, if you want to move up to the front <laughs> so it's not going in and out, so try that for now. Can you hear me okay? Okay. So the, um, after the explicit instruction, we'll go through some um, examples that you can kind of analyze and think about how you might use rubrics in your own course. Okay, is my mic working now? I think it is. Uh, okay, so what are rubrics? Rubrics are specific criteria that you establish to grade or score assignments. So those can be a, a pro a papers, projects, exams, we're gonna show use some examples of self-evaluations, even exam uh, questions. So there are mainly two types of rubrics. There is the holistic rubric, that is a rubric that assesses the overall quality of the product uh, that the student turned in, or the behavior that you're assessing. And there is the analytic rubric that is a rating of specific characteristics of that product. So the rubrics we use are actually analytic. We don't use rubrics that are too general because oftentimes we get feedback from the students saying, oh, you're too general, it doesn't tell us specifically what we need to improve on. Um, so rubrics can be used uh, in, you can, you can go, those are those like, you can, uh, I'm gonna go really fast here and I'm gonna show you some examples a little later on. So rubrics can be used to um, grade an assignment. So this is an assignment rubric. Uh, this is the peer evaluation rubric, so I have this in my ethics class when the students are presenting um, and they uh, evaluate their peers, eva evaluate the presenters, so this is a peer evaluation. There is student observed behavior in practica, this is one of Anne's rubrics that she uses. Um, this is uh, a general uh, exam grading rubric that um, I use sometimes in my exams just to say overall the quality of this work was very, was very good, good, poor, and acceptable. This is more of a holistic example of rubric. It's a little more general. And I'm going to show you more detail. This is uh, an exam question rubric. So this is very specific. I ask them a question and I grade each specific criteria that the question should involve. And I'll give you more examples. There's also, one, this is one of Anne's rubrics, a self-evaluation and teaching rubric. Um, so what are the benefits of using rubrics? Probably a lot of us know the benefits. So it makes grading more efficiently, efficient. It makes grading more consistent. So if you have several TAs grading, it's great to have a rubric so you agree on the criteria, you agree when students meet certain criteria. Um, you provide constructive feedback to your students and specific feedback to students. So you don't say, that's why we're not using the holistic rubrics, we're using the analytic rubrics because you're providing specific feedback on the things that they did well or the things that they need to improve on. Um, also provides transparency and expectations to the students. So oftentimes I put my rubric out there before the assignment so they know the, how they're going to be graded, uh, the assignment is going to be graded. Uh, it, provide, it provides a structure for evaluations and feedback against the standard. So you establish a standard. You're not comparing one student against the other. You have your standard and you have your rubric before the assignment is turned in so the students know what standards they have to meet. Uh, like I said, consistency between graders, that's, uh, even if you don't have multiple TAs, if you're sharing grading with your TA, if you're grading half of the exams, your TA is grading the other half, that helps. And um, it also makes you a better grader because you're going to be a more reliable grader. 
because you're going to be more consistent in grading uh, student <laughs> one and student number 30. Oftentimes, we get easier or harder as we go along. So rubrics are going to help you, you that, with that. All right, so Anne is going to show you how to make, uh, to build rubrics in Canvas. I'm going to give you specific directions on how to create a rubric bec before you put it in Canvas. So first, I recommend that you use learning outcomes for every assignment you have or every question you have. So have specific learning outcomes. Okay, in this assignment, students will do X, Y, and Z. So then, you're going to identify what you're going to be assessing. Is it a critical thinking skill? Is it, um, is it information that they have to recall, integrate, apply? Um, so that is, we, you are going to have to think about what skill, what knowledge the student needs to have. Uh, then you're going to select about four to five criteria. Um, it can be three if you choose. We usually recommend five to, uh, four to five. And then you're going to go to describe your top level work. And if you haven't taught this class before, or if you haven't given the assignment before, it's going to be a little tricky. But oftentimes you know what a top level assignment is going to look like. You're going to describe that. Okay, a top level work is going to be, uh, is going to mention these five things. So then you're going to go to intermediate level work. So for example, this is excellent, this is good. Um, and then you're going to go to unacceptable work. Something that is not, that is going to be probably a grade one or zero. And then you're going to go and get your worst acceptable work. So it's still acceptable, but it's below the standards you established. You practice, you use those examples. You practice, you, you, you use examples of student work. You put them in here so you see how they compare to each other, if there is a, dis a clear distinction between these four levels. And try in your course, and every year you're going to have to refine it. That's what I do with my rubrics. Every year I have to refine it a little bit. So this is a, a pretty simple worksheet that you can use where it has your course title, your name, the description of the assignment. So over there, the description of the assignment is where you should put the objectives of your assignment. And the objectives of your assignment should line up with the components of your rubric. And here you have the criteria. Here you have good work, intermediate work, unacceptable work, something like that. And then you can choose between four and five criteria, uh, levels of achievement. Okay, okay great. So let's, um, I'm gonna walk you through an example of how to do this in Canvas. You're welcome to pull up your computers and try it out as I'm talking through. Um, and then I will, first I'm gonna give you ac the actual instructions so you can certainly come back to this and look through them. Um, you can also contact your wonderful city staff um, who will guide you through creating rubrics in Canvas. But there are a couple of tricks and we're I'm gonna practice just incorporating the kind of theory behind rubrics with the practical application within our, um, our teaching system in Canvas. So first, you'll obviously go to your Canvas course, you'll click on assignments, go to the assignment you wanna add the rubric to, but here's the trickiest part. You do not click the edit button on the assignment. Instead, you scroll down to the assignment. I'll give you another example here on a, actually I think I have rubrics on all of, mm, can't do a rubric on a discussion. Let me start one new assignment here quick. So instead of editing in the actual assignment, no, I'm not gonna be able to, you'll go down to a create rubric button. That looks like this, add rubric, okay? Then this will pop up, this sample um, to fill in, or template to fill in. You'll enter your title, just like on the, that last Word document or PDF version form that Eloisa presented. You'll enter the criteria by clicking the edit tool, just as everything else within Canvas. And then you'll start adding the criterion that are necessary for your assignment or for your exam question or for whatever um, the overarching goal is for this rubric. 
Uh, we'll talk through how to adjust rating points, the descriptions for those points, and then uh, the diff you can have different scales for different question or different criterion. Um, and the last, you can select to use the rubric for assignment grading. And so when you click through your rubric, just as if you would circle items on a paper-based rubric, you can click um, the scores you want to assign for different criterion on your rubric um, when you select this. Uh, option on Canvas to use the rubric for assignment grading, and it will assign that grade right um, to your your uh, student through SpeedGrader. Last, of course, you'll hit Save Rubric. So you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like this. The um, top, I, you, I just put in my own words here, so you'll enter a brief description of your criterion here. You can also enter that longer description if you choose. Um, I usually enter something additional so that students know exactly what I'm talking about, and but that they also have the kind of main objective, the main idea for what I'm going for. So let me show you our walkthrough in activity. Does anybody want to try it out while we're chatting? Not so much. Okay, that's fine. Um, so I'll just walk through it. We're going to um, develop a rubric for your fall 2019 preparedness for class. This is worth 10 points of the 1,000 points for the most prepared teacher at USU. So we thought first of our criteria to develop this rubric. We thought it would be very important that you have your syllabus ready to go. Also fantastic if you have your content, but content is a lot in a 15, 16 a week course. So we broke that into two separate sections, lectures and reading content, as well as assignment and exam content. Then we broke those, each of those three criteria further down to describe what would show us that the criterion of having your syllabus ready, um, what would show us that you've met that criterion, what would be a, um, the components we'd be looking for. So we'd want to know that you have all the required content. We'd want to make sure that it's posted on Canvas. Um, for the lectures and readings, uh, it's quality and uh, um, objective measure, right? So we want to make sure that our lecture and reading content is highly relevant to our course objectives, that it aligns with what we're trying to teach. Um, do we have lecture note outlines posted on Canvas? Is that something you do? Do you have all your readings and due dates posted on Canvas? I'm, I'm not going to ask you because I'm going to feel real bad if somebody can check all these off already. But um, <laughs> let me go and show you the example. So here's a, par a portion of that assignment or that rubric. So you've, I've entered the syllabus first, the content for all lectures and reading. Then I'm going to go here and go into the edit mode so you can see what this looks like. So I'll enter one more, um, a new criterion. Actually, I'm going to, yeah, let me, yeah, let me just do a new criterion. Okay, so this is going to be content. It's going to be my main criterion again, but this is going to be for assignments and quizzes instead. Okay, so you see it come up here at the bottom. I think I said that was going to be worth three points. Yep. So I can adjust my point quality, um, quantity, excuse me. And here, so you notice when, I, when I'm going to hit enter here on, whoops, I'm not on the extra credit. Content is right now, full marks is worth five points. If I go over to this points column and I select three, it should automatically change my um, full marks criterion there. But if I want to break it down, um, so what does three points for an assignment and quiz look like? Having all those components. So we mentioned a few of them. Anybody want to shout out some ideas? What would full marks look like on assignments and quizzes? in your syllabus? What do you typically do? Here, I, these are super fun. I just have to try them. So you can throw them, you can catch them, and then you can talk in them. All right. Can people, oh, there we go. Uh, clear description of what assignments are. Clear descriptions. OK. What else? I'm going to let you throw it back to somebody else. Thanks. Maybe due dates. If you haven't learned this yet, um, in one of your sessions today, wait time, probably the most important thing, and I'm not doing a great job of using it. So I'm going to wait you out on this next one. <laughs> Be prepared. Yes, Marika. Uh, 
making a rubric. Great. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Star student rubrics. Good. Any other criteria you could think of that you'd want to have um, ready for your course? As far as assignments and quizzes go? All right, well, we have a good start here. I failed again at waiting you out, sorry. Um, so since we have three criteria, one way you can do it is to create three points. You have, notice how I'm, um, so I'm, to edit all of these, you have to put in some kind of description for the, the rating title. So you can do a, just a quantitative measure. Do I have all three of these things? Clear descriptions, due dates, and rubrics. Do I only have two of the three? Do I only have one of the three or none of the three? But you can also think, um, I'll be honest with you, when I first started creating rubrics, most of my rubrics were like this, this kind of quantity based. Did they do everything that I thought they should do? Did they only do half of what they th I thought they should do? Or did they do none of what I thought they should do? They do anything. Um, but then I realized that students who were not doing, um, students who were just doing the bare minimum, were there were students who were far surpassing them that I felt like, well, that was, you spent a lot more time on that product. You had much better quality product. So you started incorporating quality into my rubrics as well. Um, so you'll play around with that as Eloisa mentioned that um, they're, they're never perfect, but it gives you a great place to start and kind of, for me, helped me realize um, what was important to me in my grading, what I expected my students to come out with, not just the, uh, that they listed three things. Uh, um, on their, in their paragraph, but that they did so in a clear manner and um, they synthesized those three things so that um, they showed under, deeper understanding of the concept, things like that. So you can adjust anything within there. Um, let me go back into here. You can also provide a, a broader description. Which will show up in a non-boldface font there. So you can be super, super detailed if you want to, um, or you can be a little bit less. If you decide uh, as you're developing this assignment that actually assignments and quizzes are really critical, I wanna have them be worth uh, double the amount of points. So if you can change it here in the point category and it will adjust your ratings automatically for you, if they're evenly spaced, it doesn't always yeah, so if I go, thanks, five, three, and two, then, so, but you can go back in and adjust these however you want. You can even do that, okay? Um, then, again, here, this is a little checkbox I would mention um, that to use this rubric for assignment grading, I'll select update the rubric. Since my assignment is worth 12 points, my rubric is worth 12 points, but my assignment is only listed as being worth 10 points, Canvas notice an issue. So I'm gonna change it. And now my assignment is worth 12 points, just like my rubric is worth 12 points. I just wanna show you what this looks like on speed greater than briefly. First of all, any questions I should go back to ac the actual rubric development in Canvas? Oh, sorry, I thought you were giving us time. Great. Um, okay, so let's see what it looks like when you go into actually grade this assignment. You'd have the student's submission here. And then you can pull over the little bar and select. Um, so if I was looking at your syllabus, I'd say, yeah, it's complete and it's posted. I've checked on your Canvas site. So you got four out of four on that. Nice job. Um, how many people have all their lectures and all their reading set up for the course. Don't raise your hand, actually, if you do. Just, okay, good. How many, maybe, give me a show of hands. Are you a one, a two, or a three on this? Be honest. Some ones, mostly ones I'm seeing. Ones, maybe twos. I'm gonna give you a 1.75, okay? So I can decide if I want to break it down um, more than what I planned on my rubric. But if I give that 
different kind of a score. So instead of giving you a one or a three, it doesn't show this little line under. So see when you got a full points, you got a nice green mark. If I would have put you at one point here, you got a little red mark. Um, but it still allows you to uh, enter any kind of score in there that you want to. It's just a little harder to see if you have a really long rubric that you've actually graded that item. So just pay attention to this points column. Um, all right, one more on quizzes and assignments. Where are you at that on a scale of one to five? Wow, a little bit more of a range here. One to three, some fives. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to give you four points on this one, okay? And because some you're all here, I'm going to give you an extra credit point because I like to do that. So here, um, right now, your score is 9.75 out of 12. But because you're being such excellent students, and I said if you're excellent students, you get an extra credit point, I'm going to give you an extra credit point. So then Canvas automatically will bump it up. I don't know if it will allow you to go over. It will allow you to go over the, the total as well. Okay. And then if you hit save, very important, hit save <laughs> on your rubric. Uh, this is the only real glitch I've run to with um, using rubrics in Canvas is you can go through, you can enter a whole bunch of comments. Oh, where's my, I didn't show you the comment box. But if you don't save it and you go to another student, it doesn't always let you come back to any of your comments or anything that you've entered. Yeah. Let me show you. So you go back in view rubric to edit them. And then under each question, each item, there's a little comment box that you can open here. Thank you. All right. So let's go back. Yes, close to a student view. No, they don't see this. I'll show you quickly what students view. Um, it's under people, right? Anybody? Settings, thank you. Thank you. I can never even find that quickly. So if I go to, actually, let me go to assignments. Okay, so they would see this rubric. If I go into, I don't want to show you all my students, sorry. So if I go into grades, I can't select a, a, just a test student. This is an actual course. But um, you could go in under student view under your course and go into an actual student's um, name, see what the assignment looks like um, from their view as well. Um, so the sign for students, the the rubric would come up when they click on the actual assignment. So it would be the description in this assignment. You'll demonstrate complete preparedness for your fall 2019 course, um, and then they'll also see the rubric. And then when they go into the assignment to see their grade, they will see the full graded rubric with your which items you. I believe so. Yeah. Hold on. Yes. You have to go into the other sections and now, because it's a different version, let's say it's rubric 1.0 and you change it, it's now rubric 1.5. You have to go to your other sections and say now use rubric 1.5. It won't automatically update your other sections. But there Just are a, really, a yeah. Note. Thank you. And there are, um, you can save your rubric so you can plug them into any other courses um, or sessions that you need to. Thanks for that tip. There are a few more tips I want to share and then we're going to pass it back off to Eloisa. Okay, you cannot change the order that the criteria are listed in. So think about that order prior to 
developing your rubric in Canvas. So if I wanted content to be first and syllabus to be second, I can't change it unless I delete everything and re-input it. Hopefully that'll change soon in Canvas. Um, you have to enter a description for each rating category. So it can be something simple like full marks, partial marks, no marks, or it can be more, more detailed like we just um, demonstrated. I showed you how you can adjust the number of points for a particular criterion and add extra credit. And then you can only edit a rubric When you go back into your assignment, don't hit edit the assignment because you can't find your rubric. There's no rubric there. So go to your assignment. This is another thing that I've called city on multiple times. Where's my rubric? You see it there on the assignment. Here's a little tiny edit feature. That's how you get back into editing your rubric. Yep, so if you go into edit to any rubric, you can go to this find a rubric. And so I can pull up any of my rubrics from any course. All right. Can we go to the last example? Okay. So just going back to rubrics in general, I just want to show you some examples of rubrics. And of course, you can take these rubrics and add them to Canvas. I've done that in some situations, not in all. So, uh, as I mentioned in the past, uh, in the uh, first few minutes, you should, I recommend that you align your, uh, the objectives of your, uh, objectives of your assignment with the criteria of the rubric. So this is how I did it. So these are the objectives of my assignment. So I make it clear to the students and the first uh, paragraph is, uh, of the assignment says, the objectives of this assignment are review class material and then go on and on. So, this is my first obje second objective. This is how I created the rubric that reflects the learning outcome of the, uh, of the uh, learning outcome, that reflects the learning outcome. This is the third uh, learning outcome. These are the rubric criteria that I associated with that learning outcome, and so on. So this creates transparency. This creates alignment between expectations and assessment. So this is what my, that rubric that I just showed, this is how it looks like in Canvas. Again, that little button there, you can edit the points. And this is all the, um, the criteria I have that describe uh, my concept map assignment, for example. This is the rubric I use for the ethical decision reasoning uh, that I have, uh, assignment that I have in my course. So, I describe this goes in Canvas, and it goes in my syllabus. So grade zero, what grade zero is, grade, what grades one and two are, what grade, grade three is, grades four and five. So exactly how well the idea is presented, how well the assignment is written. Because in that case, I care about how they express their opinions. Um, this is another example of another Canvas rubric. This is the case scenario I give to my students. I teach in the vet school, so I give a lot of clinical scenarios. And then I say, what's going on in the immune system of this animal? And these are the criteria. And this I share with my TA. So I have this as an exam question. So I have an exam question. I have my exams in Canvas. The problem with Canvas is that they don't let you add a rubric to each individual question. So I put this as not this, right? Because this is the answer. But I put this as this part here, the criteria for my students to see what I am expecting them to answer in that question. And then I share this with my TA and I say, if the students just mention that B and T cells are involved in this mechanism, they get full credit. If they mention only B or T cells, they get partial credit. If they don't mention any cells, they get zero points. So this, is, this makes an eight-point question that is a big question for my exam to be broken down into points and to be a lot more straightforward to grade. So considerations for creating rubrics. What, ask yourself what you want to assess. If you want to assess writing ability, if you want to assess only content, 
If you want to assess critical thinking, so that's, those are the things that you have to think about. If you want to assess a specific skill that the student has, um, what are, how critical are the skills associated to each criterion? So how much value you're going to give to your criterion number one versus criterion number two and so on. So I usually tend to put the most important criteria on top so they are worth more points than the last criteria. Um, and also, how are you going to describe the criterion to the students, to your co-teachers and your TAs? So grading is consistent. So how are you going to say, um, this is what I perceive as good work, this is unacceptable work. Oftentimes when I'm working with a TA, what I found helpful to do is to get the TA on board. So I say, okay, let's sit down and create a rubric. So the TA that is going to be grading the exams or the, uh, the assignments, she agrees with the way I'm grading. Because if she doesn't agree with the way I'm grading, then we're going to have problems. I'm going to grade some assignments differently from hers. So those are the things. So um, you, in, a, in a rubric, you, wanna, you don't want to give too much information to the students, but too much inf information to the students or too little information. So this is the trickiest thing. When you have a rubric, is to be specific enough, but not to, give, to make it too easy and give too much context to the students. So here are a few resources where you can find explanations for rubrics, some examples of rub rubrics, some rubric, rubric templates that I like to use to, when I'm developing a new rubric. And th that's it for now. I, I don't know if we have time for questions. We don't have time for, for questions. Thank you. Thank you.